But all right, so uh, let's, let's get into Art Plug, because like, Art Plug is something that, uh, I want to say you started in 2017. I didn't even know you started back then, but um, yeah, let's just say, what, let's start with there. Um, what is the local Art Plug? Definitely, so what we do at the local Art Plug is connect local artists and local art lovers through shared experiences, affinities, and in-person events. Uh, currently, we give artists a platform online uh, to display their work and gain potential uh, passive revenue from through our subscription model, which we feel in, uh, lowers the, in, the barrier to entry into purchasing fine art made by local artists. Because a lot of times you'll find local art and you'll be like, man, that's beautiful, but I just can't afford it. And uh, oftentimes, even after you do purchase it, you're like, man, I'm stuck with this for life. I don't want to, you know, keep this. Mm -hmm. So we've in invented our uh, rotation subscription where you kind of pay a monthly subscription fee and we can come in and give you new art every month from a local artist. You never have to leave your home and you kind of get uh, to enjoy that art for a little bit uh, without having to, you know, pay that high price and uh, keep it for life. And then, you know, end up hating it 10 years from now and it's like, oh, I'm trying to sell it and never mm -hmm. get your money back for it. So uh, that's what we do digitally and in person we throw different events such as uh, Escape Fest. I was a collaboration with Escape Fest Omaha. Mm -hmm. uh, we did the local creative center where we helped bring creative culture and uh, local artists into the space where skateboarders were also at. So um, we helped not only bridge the gap but help give them a platform to hopefully get sales and get their name out there and uh, just kind of grow in, in that direction. Um, a lot of opportunities for people who just did, had, had nothing uh, prior to that. Um, what else we've done is throw a show at Modus, where we're at right now, mm -hmm. currently, yep. the Breathe show. Mm -hmm. That was focused more on uh, POCs and women, um, just highlighting their experiences through uh, COVID and the pandemic and kind of where they're at now and the art that they're making now and kind of what they've done to maintain themselves as artists. Mm -hmm. So that was the Breathe show. Um, we've got more stuff planned for next year. We're looking into branching into NFTs, but the end goal is to have a location-based app. So whatever city you land into, you can find the local artists, the galleries and the events. Mm. Um, even if the artists aren't showing, you can still buy art from them because you know you never know. Your, your favorite artist might be in that town, but you just they don't have a show that weekend, so mm. you never know. Um, and that was kind of uh, another one of my passions for uh, developing kind of the platform is I love traveling. When I travel, I like to buy uh, local art from that place because it feels like I'm taking a piece of that country home with me. Um, so I, I always I always look for that little people on the street uh, drawing or whatever if I can find like you know some guy who he's been there his whole life 50 mm -hmm. years old I'm like alright bet yeah, you're yeah. my man yeah, hook it up what you got mm -hmm. so yeah. we go from there um, yeah yeah definitely and I try to just help spread that joy essentially and help give these artists a way to to earn the, the, the revenue that I feel like they should be earning because there, are, there is money out there and mm -hmm. they should be able to make livable wages just people are kind of uh, more into that that print art from uh, you know like Walmart, Target, yeah. the mm -hmm. cutter, uh, whatever they have mm -hmm. there. Right, right. So yeah, we're trying to shift that mi mindset. Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing just to see like also the community aspect of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like um, with the event that you did specifically, the um, Skate Fest, it was cool because you're more or less creating like little micro communities with all these different people who you know probably otherwise would not have run into each other because um you got artists you know whether they are painters whether they are sculptors on uh, whether they do you know stitching uh, whether they create their own clothes and you have skaters who are you know i don't know much about the skate community you probably know more about them but then you also got um you know food you know bringing in different entrepreneurs or startups who are getting their food businesses started so i mean what i mean what was it like being a part of that like getting skate fest or actually just like what was skate fest i'll just say because some people might not know what skate fest was so what was skate fest Definitely. So Skate Fest was Omaha's first ever skate festival. Uh, originally, my friend Blake Harris came to me with the idea uh, in actually May of this year. Yeah, we, we thought of it this year That's and it kind quick. of just took off. That's so, um, yep, in May he came to me. He was like, man, we should have, uh, actually it was probably April and we were planning it to have, uh, to have it in May, but complications with the city and getting permits and things like that mm -hmm. kind of prevented us at the time. But um, we met up early spring and we're like all right let's do this we're gonna have an event here it's gonna help promote bo both our brands it's gonna help mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. and it'll give the kids something to do Omaha's never really seen anything like this and I was like yeah we can do this we'll just get a table some speakers and we'll just throw it up but easy mm -hmm. done so we did that and then we started thinking about it more and we're like man we can make this a lot better we should get these people to partner on we should get these people to partner on and like, okay we can make this a real like community event so uh, he was doing a lot of the leg work as far as 
not just him himself, but uh, we also had Melinda uh, Grace Sorensen and Teresa. I can't say her last name, but shout out to Teresa. You know who you are. <laughs> Teresa. Real one. <laughs> um, yeah, there was original four, uh, and we were kind of just running around, meeting with artists, vendors, um, sponsors, and trying to see what all uh, support we could get from the community. We we did this all out of our pockets. We didn't really make any money from it at all. Uh, mm. The money that we did make went to go fund the indoor skate park, which we can talk about mm -hmm. later. But um, we've we've uh, we started the original event in May that got canceled and moved back so we had a first Friday event instead to kind of help promote we decided okay we're going to do all these mini events that lead up to it and kind of build hype so we did that first uh, show in Benson at the collectors corner shout out to Devin Dupree um, he let us use his space on a first Friday and his first Friday reservation um, I'm not sure what it's called with the Benson first Friday businesses but we also collaborated with Benson first Friday and the culture house I uh, helped provide a uh, sound system and uh, marketing as well as noise shout out to y'all gotta give all the sponsors a shout out hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we had the idea to display the skateboards in the basement um first we were thinking of all these complicated ways and then i can't remember who suggested it but then we uh we thought of the idea to put wires on the skateboards to kind of hang them up so they look like they're floating almost just like mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, give them this uh, cool like uh, mystic effect when you walk into the room mm -hmm. so that kind of helped set the trajectory for the rest of the uh, skate events people were excited and there was also uh, a, a little uh, skate box out back people were going crazy doing all kinds of tricks there was dj live music so it was a great environment um we had free drinks for a little bit till the keg ran out then it ran out oh. next up the event we had coming was uh go skate day go skate day is like a national skateboarding holiday it's june 21st i believe um every year and you're just supposed to go out and skate just all day that's when you see like all the right. skaters yeah but there was no events going on in Omaha at mm -hmm. that time, and we were like, man, we should do something. Like, I haven't heard anything. No one's heard anything. So we got uh, some more speakers from Culture House. Uh, took it down to um, Lynch Park. Yep. I don't know why I forgot Lynch Park. Yep, yep. And then uh, we set up a bunch of just picnic tables and had uh, a little grill and some hot dog buns, hot dogs, and Mountain Dew provided us some drinks. Shout out to Mountain Dew. Can't forget them. Or <laughs> Pepsi, I should say. Um <laughs> And yeah, we just made like a little grill out cookout skate fest thing. Um, it was just basically come skate these little obstacles. We got free food for you and we got music playing. Uh, the community was very supportive of it. The police didn't come. Um, it was kind of like impromptu. Uh, they did show up at the end because I'm sure they were just like, oh, what's going on? But um, even then they were just kind of watching everybody leave. It was a very peaceful event, no drama. Everyone loved it. It was just uh, it was a surreal experience, honestly. Um, so we went from that one to uh, a trick contest that was actually put together by um, Damien. I'm not sure his last name, but best skateboarder in Omaha, hands down. If not, then he's up there. I don't know who, who's topping him. Uh -oh. But um, mm -hmm. he helped run the competition as well as uh, Blake and then a couple of MCs from the area. Um, Skate Fest, of course, pulled up. We had a bunch of local vendors and artists, and we did uh, our first uh, free, like, ta uh, um, merchandise giveaway okay. so we did like throwing stuff into the crowd and stuff people going crazy ah skateboards t-shirts <laughs> <in> our buttons <laughs> yeah got you got you okay. so that was cool a live experience um and that was also kind of impromptu um but we we filled the parking lot of uh robert's skate park is where it was held at and the cars were like down the block you had to like walk to get there it's crazy so that was a great turnout as well in terms of community support Mm -hmm. um, and that really got people hyped up for the main event that we were having. Um, and we were thinking about doing another art show before that. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided that instead of picking uh, some of the best artists in Omaha, is what we did for the first art show, we let the community decide. Um, mm -hmm. and we just had like overwhelming support from the community. I think Art Plug alone had like 1,500 submissions, and then Skate Fest had about like 1,000 submissions of just uh, different artists who were mm -hmm. tagged in our posts between Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Okay. Um, so we had to sort through all those, and we were like, man, we can't pick just 10. Yeah. <laughs> How do you pick 10 out of all these people? Someone's going to yeah. be, a lot of people are going to be disrespected. So we was like, okay, yeah. we're going to do 20. Skate Fest chose 20. Our Skate Fest chose 10. Our plug chose 10. And we went with them into the to the show, and then we chose six more to do uh, live art and have that experience as well. Okay. And then we also had a skate competition at the uh, main event. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we had local vendors. We uh, partnered with Benson First Friday. They brought down that semi truck. It's uh, basically a, a mobile art gallery. Uh, shout out to Mammo, um, and yeah, we just 
It was like a kickback, man. If you ever had a family reunion, it was like that, basically, but with skateboards. <laughs>